close your eyes and tap your heels together three times and think to yourself, there's no place like home. There's no place like home. There's, there's no, no place like home. What is home for individuals? Is it the people, a specific place, or the memories made during a certain period of time that make home for somebody? The hardship of finding both home and housing reverberates as a common theme across LGBTQ rights struggles. Most people would find this place very homey, but I may not, or a lot of people don't find this place very homey, but I do. If you grow up in a place where you don't feel comfortable, or in your own spaces you don't feel comfortable, I would think that people tend to be more secluded, they don't express as much. I jumped around quite a bit. Uh, when I moved here, like, it immediately felt like home. I grew up a lot in the time that I've been here, and I think that's a big thing for you know, LGBT people and, you know, and really people of color, anyone who's kind of lived a transient lifestyle. You grow so much once you're able to put down roots and just be somewhere and feel safe and feel like, okay, this is the place where I can spread my wings. Home was kind of, so my initial version of home, I was kind of driven for church to be my home. Went to um, service, Catholic service. Catholic Mass in the morning, and then I went to Baptist service in the um, middle of the day and early afternoon. So I was at church for most of the day on Sundays and most of the evenings on Wednesdays. And it was very like kind of trying to force a home in that way, but I never really vibed with that. I think it all depends on the people around you. So I feel like as a queer person, you're automatically excluded um, from from our current society, no matter how much we are included, we're excluded automatically. For me, home is a home base. Family and friends can come together. It's a place where you can feel safe. Yeah, uh, it's been especially hard for me to find some place that I, I can call home um, because I'm, I have my foot in a lot of different worlds. So, um, being a, a queer brown person of color, I'm not always accepted in every brown space. I'm not always accepted in every white space. I'm not always accepted, you know, in um, non-queer spaces of whatever. Like, for instance, I've never actually felt at home in a, a physical place that I've lived. Even now, like, I, I own my house and I still, I, it feels like a temporary stop off for me. But I also kind of feel like home is this concept that I'm, endlessly chasing and will be endlessly chasing for the rest of my life. So I try to make like little homes, if uh, that makes sense. So like, this is one of my little homes. Cause like I have friends all over the world. Like I have little homes, like wherever I want to go basically. So, and, and people who genuinely like love and care about you and don't have to, you know? And, and that to me is truly like the meaning of home and of family is like really those relationships. Cause like, Physical spaces can go away, you know, um, they can be closed, they can be destroyed, like, um, what really matters is, like, what do you carry inside of here with you, you know, like, are you hermit crabbing all of your love, or are you just, like, walking around without protection? So, um, for me, it's, that really is my definition of home. So what does the search for home look like for queer people? How do we know when we found home? It's inherently personal, an individual journey each of us makes on our own. And that is why storytelling is so important, because by listening to stories, we can learn, and we can grow, and we can truly understand that there is no place like home. <laughs>